This is a diagram I drew to briefly provide an overview of the circulatory system, the direction of blood flow, and the blood vessels involved in making this system a closed loop. This applies for both the pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation. Anytime blood leaks out of the closed loop, then this is referred to as a hemorrhage or blood loss or bleeding. We will discuss how our bodies respond to a hemorrhage when we go over the blood vessels and blood chapters. We begin and end with the heart. The pump that maintains blood flow or circulation through these blood vessels. Always remember that blood flow is a one direction and one direction only. We have three types of blood vessels, the artery, the capillary, and the vein. We will reintroduce and discuss these blood vessels in detail with the blood vessel chapter. Let's begin with the large artery that subsequently branches into smaller and smaller arteries. Taken all together, we call this the arterial system. So, from the large artery, it branches into medium-sized arteries. The medium-sized arteries branch into small arteries. The small arteries further branch into arterioles. The arterioles are the smallest and tiniest branches of the arteries, or arterial system. These arterioles are microscopic, which means we will need the use of a microscope to see them. Blood then enters the capillaries, which are also microscopic. It is at the capillaries where substances are exchanged between blood and the tissue cells. Examples of substances that are exchanged are gases such as carbon dioxide and oxygen. Another example are the nutrients and wastes. To make the exchange more efficient, these capillaries surround the tissue cells. We call a cluster or a network of these capillaries as a capillary bed. The number of capillary beds found within the tissue or organs determines how vascular the tissue or organ is. So, the more capillary beds found in any given tissue or organ, the more vascular the tissue or organ. While the fewer capillary beds found in any given tissue or organ, the less vascular the tissue or organ. Now, what if there are no capillaries found in the tissue or organ? Then the tissue or organ is referred to as being avascular. Blood then flows out of the capillaries into the venules. Venules are considered the smallest branches of the veins. Just like the arterioles and capillaries, these venules are also microscopic. Unlike the arteries that branch into smaller and smaller arteries, veins come together or converge into larger and larger veins. So, venules converge into a small vein, small veins converge into a medium-sized vein, medium-sized veins converge into a large vein. Taken all together, we call this the venous system. From the large vein, blood drains back into the heart. It is important to note that this diagram does not discuss whether the blood that circulates through these blood vessels is oxygenated or deoxygenated, because this diagram applies for both the pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation. The aorta is the artery in which all arteries of the systemic circuit are derived from including the arteries that supply the heart itself. The arteries of the systemic circuit are collectively called systemic arteries, and the blood that travels through these systemic arteries is oxygenated. These systemic arteries deliver oxygenated blood to all structures of the body. The aorta is divided into the following major segments. The aortic root, the ascending aorta, the aortic arch, the thoracic aorta, and the abdominal aorta. These segments are determined by where along the length of the aorta we are at. The root of the aorta 
or aortic root, is anchored to the base of the heart. It is at the aortic root where we find an enlarged area called the aortic sinus, also called the sinus of Valsava. The importance of the aortic sinus will be discussed in the physiology of the heart. Furthermore, the left and right coronary arteries branch off the aorta at the aortic root, specifically at the aortic sinus. These coronary arteries will supply oxygenated blood to the wall of the heart, the epicardium and the myocardium. Why not the endocardium? It is because the endocardium lines the chambers of the heart and is in direct contact with the blood. It is important to remember that these coronary arteries are part of the systemic circuit, therefore are considered systemic arteries, and the oxygenated blood that flows through them is part of the systemic circulation. From the aortic root, the aorta ascends to give us the next segment of the aorta, the ascending aorta. From the ascending aorta, the aorta arches over, so this segment is referred to as the aortic arch. It is at the aortic arch where the arteries going to the head, neck, and upper extremities or upper limbs will branch off. From the aortic arch, the aorta descends to give us the thoracic aorta. Arteries going to structures in the thoracic region or thorax branch off the thoracic aorta except the coronary arteries. As was already mentioned, the wall of the heart, the epicardium and myocardium are supplied with oxygenated blood by the coronary arteries. As you will see later, these coronary arteries will further branch as it wraps around the wall of the heart. As the aorta continues to descend, it passes through the diaphragm. Once past the diaphragm, the segment is now called the abdominal aorta. Arteries going to structures of the abdominal pelvic region and arteries going to the lower extremities or lower limbs and structures of the pelvic region will branch off the abdominal aorta. Here's another diagram that I created that covers the blood flow into the heart, through the heart, and out of the heart along with the associated structures. This will summarize some of what we've already covered and will provide a good source of review. The blue arrows indicate deoxygenated blood and the red arrows indicate oxygenated blood that travels through the given blood vessels. Once again, deoxygenated blood has a low oxygen concentration and a high carbon dioxide concentration, while oxygenated blood has a high oxygen concentration and a low carbon dioxide concentration. Remember that the pulmonary circuit are blood vessels that deliver deoxygenated blood to the lungs from the heart and oxygenated blood from the lungs back to the heart. This blood flow is referred to as the pulmonary circulation, while the systemic circuit are blood vessels that deliver oxygenated blood from the heart to all the tissues and organs of the body and deliver deoxygenated blood from these same tissues and organs back to the heart. Arteries branch into smaller and smaller arteries, which are all part of the arterial system. And veins converge or come together into larger and larger veins, which are all part of the venous system. Let us first consider blood flow into the right side of the heart. The right atrium collects blood from the veins of the systemic circuit. Veins of the systemic circuit are called systemic veins. These systemic veins deliver deoxygenated blood into the right atrium from all the tissues and organs in the body. We have three major systemic veins, the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, and the coronary sinus. The superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava are great vessels of the heart and are the largest veins in the body. Systemic veins above the diaphragm, except the heart, converge into the superior vena cava. 
Systemic veins below the diaphragm converge into the inferior vena cava. Deoxygenated blood coming from the wall of the heart is delivered into the right atrium through the coronary sinus, in which there is an opening found along the medial side of the right atrium, called the opening of the coronary sinus. From the right atrium, blood passes through the right atrioventricular valve, or right AV valve, or tricuspid valve, as it empties into the right ventricle. The right ventricle's main objective is to pump this deoxygenated blood to the lungs when it contracts. This is the reason why the right side of the heart is considered the pulmonary circuit pump. Blood leaves the right ventricle, passes through the pulmonary semilunar valve or pulmonary valve as it enters the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary trunk is the largest artery in the pulmonary circuit and is another great vessel of the heart. The pulmonary trunk further branches for a total of four pulmonary arteries, two left pulmonary arteries that deliver deoxygenated blood to the left lung, and two right pulmonary arteries that deliver deoxygenated blood to the right lung. Gas exchange occurs at the lungs. Oxygen is picked up by the blood and carbon dioxide is picked up by the lungs. The oxygen comes from the air that we inhale and the carbon dioxide picked up by the lungs is the air that we exhale. The site at which this occurs will be at the capillaries or capillary beds that are extensively found throughout the lungs. Remember, capillaries are blood vessels where exchange of substances occur. After such gas exchange, the blood is now oxygenated. This oxygenated blood travels back to the heart through a total of four pulmonary veins, two left pulmonary veins from the left lung and two right pulmonary veins from the right lung. These pulmonary veins are part of the pulmonary circuit and are also considered great vessels of the heart. We have four openings in the left atrium that allows the oxygenated blood to drain into the left atrium. Blood passes through the left atrioventricular valve or left AV valve or bicuspid valve or mitral valve as it flows into the left ventricle. The main objective of the left ventricle is to pump blood to the entire body from head to toe, which is the reason the left side of the heart is considered the systemic circuit pump. When the left ventricle contracts, it pumps the blood out of the left ventricle and into the aorta as it passes through the aortic semilunar valve or aortic valve. The aorta is the largest artery in the body and is the largest systemic artery in which all systemic arteries are derived from. The aorta, just like the superior vena cava, the inferior vena cava, the pulmonary trunk, and the pulmonary veins is a great vessel of the heart. At the aortic root, the left and right coronary arteries branch off to provide oxygenated blood to the wall of the heart. Blood ascends through the ascending aorta, arches over through the aortic arch. Systemic arteries that provide oxygenated blood to the head, neck, and upper limbs branch off the aortic arch. Blood then descends through the thoracic aorta, where systemic arteries that supply structures of the thoracic region, or thorax, branch off, except for the coronary arteries. Once past the diaphragm, blood continues to descend into the abdominal aorta. Systemic arteries that supply the abdominal pelvic structures and systemic arteries that supply the lower extremities and pelvic structures branch off the abdominal aorta. Once the oxygenated blood reaches the tissues and organs, gas exchange occurs between the tissue cells and blood that happens at the capillary beds. So oxygen is picked up by the tissue cells and carbon dioxide produced by the tissue cells is picked up by the blood. After such gas exchange has occurred, the blood is now deoxygenated and will make its way back to the right atrium as it travels through the systemic veins.